Welcome back or welcome to Nat Cat's Bookish Cafe. Today I will be starting a vlog. Um, it is the 1st of December and as you saw we got our first Christmas snow last night. Um, I will be reading two um, books in this vlog. I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to title the vlog but the the gist of it is that I'm reading a book from an author that I've previously loved. Um, this will actually be my second experience with each of these authors. I gave both of their other books that I read five stars. So the books I will be reading in this vlog are Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood and Uprooted by Naomi Novik. So I will be starting with Love on the Brain. Um, I will start this hopefully this morning. I gave The Love Hypothesis five stars. And, and this book is, I believe, like a companion novel to it. I don't know if they're in any way connected, um, but we are following the similar theme of following a woman in STEM. We have two characters that work together. So I don't believe this is a school setting. Um, anymore and she is having some issues at work. It seems like a lot of people are turning against her for whatever reason. I don't know if it's because she's a driven woman or what, um, but the man that she saw as her work nemesis ends up being her ally. So I don't know if this is full enemies to lovers kind of situation, but it's definitely a dislike to a very much like situation. And I absolutely loved Allie Hazelwood's writing and the humor. I thought the story was so sweet. Um, so this is another five star prediction for me. Both of these books are honestly five stars. Um, so I will um, let you know when I get into it a little way, my initial thoughts. <laughs> Hey guys, so I am on my lunch break and I've only read 18 pages of this so far. I only read it on my 15 minute break, um, but I already have a, a few thoughts so I thought I'd pop in real quick. So we are following, I think her name is B. Yeah, B. Um, and she and she has been working um just at this like company where she's been doing like a lot of data and stuff she feels like her 
professional life has kind of come to a standstill. Um, but at the beginning of this book, she gets accepted as a um, lead for a new project um, in NASA. Um, so she's super excited for that. But then she finds out that this guy, Levi, I think is his name, um, is going to be her co-lead. So they're going to be leading together. And it seems that they went to school together and that he kind of like refused to work on a project with her back in the day. This book is very much the trope of oh he didn't want to be around me he couldn't look at me he didn't want to work with me so he hates me one of those tropes where we as the reader all know that the reason that he probably couldn't make eye contact was because he doesn't know how to handle his emotions he's like emotionally constipated or something or just emotionally a coward um and wasn't able to admit that he had feelings for her <laughs> at the time um and that eventually at some point in the book he will admit that he has had feelings from her for her um from the very beginning um so if that's a trope that you're kind of tired of i don't read too much um contemporary contemporary romance um you know i read a pretty good mix of genres so I'm not like too sick of it but I do feel like it's a relatively common trope and it falls very much under miscommunication um so some people might find that very annoying um it's not bothering me too much I am kind of like rolling my eyes that that's where we're coming from but you know it is what it is I do really like Brie she is German just like me um and she has a twin sister who is pretty much the exact opposite of her so we got to see a conversation between the two of them which was fun um she is very passionate about her work um, her fiance cheated on her um, about like six months before their wedding. All of this has happened in the first 18 pages. So I feel like none of it is really spoilery. Um, so she's very much like romance, been there, tried it, didn't work out. Now I'm going to focus on my career and just really blast off into space with all of this. Um, so she's really driven, really passionate. Um, and I do enjoy that in a character. She is now flying off to Nashville, Texas um, with her um, assistant. And we will um, see how it goes based off the synopsis. I'm assuming that the people on this project are not going to be very happy that she is the one leading it. I don't know if it's because... Um, they think she lacks experience or if it's because she's a woman um but either way i have a feeling that's going to be very frustrating to read but i'm enjoying the humor of it it is already relatively sweet i think her character is pretty cute um and i'm having a decent time even though it does have that pretty much like miscommunication trope that it's relying on so it seems she also has a twitter page called what would marie do where she kind of um ask what would marie curry do in situations because she is her absolute idol this is kind of a place where women and stem can come together and kind of vent um and ask for advice about the discrimination that they um are facing in the field um and there's a another twitter page which is run by a man that she has been messaging back and forth with for years who does kind of a similar thing um that talks about like the elitism of the science field um and often comes to her page to kind of chase off the trolls um that come and i was just like trying to figure out who this guy could be i i hope we find out who this guy that she has been talking and bonding with all this time because i don't know i don't know <laughs> All right, guys, so it is Friday afternoon. I'm on my lunch break, but I just got to the halfway point of Love on the Brain, chapter 14, page 180. So I thought I'd do a quick update on my thoughts so far. 
The interesting thing is there are a lot of things happening in this book that I have complained about in other books, but it's not really taking away that much enjoyment for me. Um, so there is a lot of like miscommunication going on here where she's making a lot of assumptions about things and holding on to truths that are being disproven pretty much during every single interaction between the two of them um which can definitely be frustrating um but for some reason i'm just enjoying the drawn out experience of her not realizing that he is head over heels in love with her um previously i mentioned that she was interacting with another twitter page i think his name is like schmack or something um and as anyone with half a brain knows, it is run by him. And that kind of allows us to see what he is thinking about her. Um, because Schmack told her that there is a girl that he is working with who is married, because he thinks she's married, um, that he is in love with. And he is telling her how he feels about her. Um, and it gives you a little bit of what you're missing by this being just one point of view. When it comes to romances, I do prefer multiple points of view. I want her to walk away angry after a interaction where, you know, he doesn't, you know, react the way that she wants him to. And then for us to get his point of view saying that he reacted that way because he can't think straight when in her presence or something like that. I like to see the, you know, dark, brooding, non-reactive man's internal reactions because we're not getting much of it from the outside. Um, and it allows me to connect more with the main character and being connected emotionally invested in both characters in a relationship is very important for me in a romance. However, um, you know, I am still enjoying the writing. I really love the characters. This book is making me laugh a lot. I'm just having a really good time. It's just a lot of fun. I'm not taking it too serious or anything like that. I'm enjoying the drama. There's a a lot of drama that I think is about to um, show up here. Um, they are at a convention, which is where in the Love Hypothesis, they jump into bed together. And I'm wondering if that'll be a repeat situation in this book as well. Um, otherwise, she has a, um, a team member whose name um is like rokio rokio I, I i can't remember what her name is but she gives off such wednesday adam vibes um so i'm absolutely in love with that side character other than that i'm trying to think if there's anything else that i wanted to say so all in all um i think this might not be a five star it might be more like a high four or 4.5 just because miscommunication is such a big part of the story but um i'm having a lot of fun i'm gonna be probably relatively busy this weekend i'm still hoping to finish the book this weekend but there's a good chance that i might not um check in with you until i actually finish the story <laughs> Alright guys, so it is Saturday evening, a little bit before 4.30 and I have just finished Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. Um, I'm going back and forth on whether or not I want to give this a 5 star or a 4.5. I had a ton of fun with this story. It had me laughing so much and I absolutely love books 
that make me laugh. I really loved their relationship, but it did rely very heavily on her being in denial about his feelings for her, as well as some miscommunication, which, you know, isn't like my favorite trope. It didn't take too much away from the story, but I do think that it annoyed me enough where I think it might be better um, if I give it a 4.5 rating. I think I already said most of the things that I have to say about this book. Um, the ending um, was definitely climactic, so that was a lot of fun. The steamy scenes were pretty decent as well. Uh, but other than that, not much more to say on this bad boy. Um, so definitely a good start to the month. So sometime tonight or tomorrow, I will be jumping into my next read, which is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. Um, this, I believe, is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. We are following a character who lives on or in a town that is located right outside of a magical forest that is slowly encroaching onto this village. There is a wizard um, that is keeping the forest at bay, but he does have a price, and that is that every 10 years, or is it every year? No, every 10 years. So every 10 years, he um, demands that a young woman is sent to him to do his bidding. And in this story, our character is chosen um, to be that woman. Um, other than that, I really have no idea what is going to happen in this book. Um, but I absolutely love Naomi Novik's writing um, and her slow-paced romances and her strong female characters. And I am very excited to um, enjoy one of her books again. I will update you once I have um, gotten a little ways in and maybe get a better grasp of the story and of course to give you my initial thoughts. <laughs> so it is monday evening i just got off work and i'm about to head to the gym but i just wanted to quickly give my initial thoughts for uprooted by naomi novik i'm on chapter four page 55 i didn't do any reading on sunday i was just busy all day um but i did go ahead and start it this morning and just wanted to let you know what i was thinking so far i am really enjoying it i I feel that our main character's uh, relationship with the dragon, which is the name of the magician in this book, has um, a lot of similar um, themes or behaviors um, to the relationship of our um, money collector and the Stark King and uh, Spinning Silver. 
and um, I am really enjoying that kind of relationship. Right now he's being um, pretty impatient with her. He sees her very much as a burden. She's not the one that he wanted to select, but there is a reason that he did um, select her. I'm not going to talk too much about that, even though it happens towards the beginning. I don't believe it really mentions it in the synopsis. I'm not going to talk about that, um, but she is being um, a bit more stubborn as she goes along with his relationship, realizing that he's not going to hurt her or anything. So she realizes that she has, you know, some power in the relationship, if not a lot. Um, so I do enjoy her a lot as um, a character. I am enjoying the writing style a lot. It's really easy to get drawn into Naomi Novik's stories. They're really immersive and you can just get lost in them um, and just read them for hours and hours even though I do not have the time to do so which is why I've only read 55 pages so far today um, but yeah not too much has occurred at this time um, it does seem like we are in a country that has been at war with another country for some time after two members of each royal family or I guess one member from each royal family, two people disappeared into the magical woods and each kingdom is blaming the other for the death of those two and they've been fighting um, for about 20 years or so. So I'm assuming that'll play some part in this plot. Um, very interested or very excited to just um, watch our characters' relationships develop. I feel like Naomi Novik is really good at um, creating a male love interest that's very unlikable at the beginning and underestimates our female characters and then slowly begins to realize kind of what a special person he has in front of him and just starts to try to change himself um to be a worthy of her um when before he did not see her as being worthy of him and I'm assuming that this relationship will kind of work in the same way and I do like that relationship that dynamic um so so for now those are just my initial thoughts um I'll check in with you either when I have um more thoughts or um maybe once I reach the 50% mark <laughs> On my lunch break, it is Wednesday and I finally reached the 50% mark of this book. I'm at page 182. This is a relatively um, slowish read. I would say I feel like there's just enough going on to keep me interested and I do enjoy um, the characters quite a bit so I enjoy spending time with them. I do like that in the last few pages... Um, we have got to spend more time with her and her friend because I do like the relationship between the women in Naomi Novik's story. So I'm glad that we have her and her friend's um, relationship being explored a little bit. I do hope that it goes a little bit more into that because I think they have a pretty interesting dynamic just based off the life that they lived and the life they expected to live moving forward. Um, because um, obviously her friend was supposed to be the one that was taken and she expected most of her life to be that and then she wasn't so that kind of threw a wrench into everyone's plans um, so that is an interesting aspect of the story um, I am thinking that things are going to get a little bit more fast paced at this point that um, the plot is going to move forward at a more rapid pace and that more plot points are going to be presented. Our characters have been presented with a new task of saving a queen who has been lost in this magical wood for 20 years um, and this was previously thought impossible but it does seem like there's a glimmer of hope that it may be possible at this point um, so we'll definitely probably spend more time in the woods and maybe getting to experience more of the monsters um, that live within it so excited for that as well. Well, other than that, um, despite it still being um, a slow read, I am finding it very easy to get immersed in the story, to just sit down and 
read as much as possible. I don't know if I'll check in with you again until I'm finished, so maybe, you know, two or three days before I talk to you. Um, but so far, it's definitely a good wintry read just because you have that fairy tale aspect of it and we also spent some time in winter. The whole story isn't sent in winter, but we did have that, you know, feeling of being in the cold and in the snow and things like that. So um, that's my update for now. And I will check in with you um, either when I have something to say or when I finish. the gym I decided I would treat myself to some Burger King specifically an impossible burger um, which is like a vegan option um, I don't eat fast food very often I'm not a huge fan of it um, but my parents ate out tonight and I'd already cooked myself lunch so I was too lazy to cook myself anything when I got home and so I show up there and they have these like automatic checkout things where you just put in like your own order and uh then they call it or whatever and they didn't have the impossible burger so i looked up online and they said that it's not available in all locations so i was like oh okay fine and i ordered just a regular burger and i pay and i come home and i'm eating it <laughs> my dad's like oh you got mcdonald's i was like no i got burger king <laughs> he's like it's a mcdonald's bag and I was like, what do you, <laughs> I went to Burger King. I went to the one by QFC, that's Burger King, right? And he's like, no, <laughs> I went to McDonald's and I thought I was in a Burger King the entire time. Like, I can't even tell the difference. Like they're exactly the same. And I feel so dumb. This is what happens when you only go to fast food places like once a year, you, you don't even know where you're at. So that's why they didn't have the Impossible Burger. Because it's not Burger King. <laughs> around um, in a little bit and give you my final thoughts um, once I collect them a little bit more but I just wanted to give you a look at my bingo board so this is for the love hypothesis this is for uprooted today is the ninth so we're not doing too terrible I am currently um, about 74% through we free the stars which is probably or is definitely the longest audiobook on my um, TBR. I did also finish my punishment prompt by reading The Poet X. So I've read um, three books so far this month, but my punishment prompt isn't on here. Um, so I know for a fact that I want to read The Bird King and Knots and Crosses is going to be the next... Um, audiobook that I'm going to listen to once I finish We Free the Stars. Um, so I'm planning on reading Work for It by Talia Hibbert next, which may not seem like it makes much sense, like I should be reading one of these two, but I just feel like The Bird King is going to have similar feels, kind of that historical fantasy to Uprooted, so I want to just um, read another genre before I read that one. Um, so I'm hoping to maybe read this and then read The Bird King and by then I'll probably have this audiobook done as well because it's relatively short and I've been getting through audiobooks pretty good lately. Um, and my goal is to have 
three across and then one four across and once i finish we free the stars and work for it i only have a house only have a hundred thousand kingdoms and love after the end left and those are two books that i definitely want to read because they're on my 22 books to read in 2022 um so that is kind of my plan um for this bingo board um so i guess technically so far i haven't made any progress towards my plan because i've only filled out these two random spots um but hey you know i have really enjoyed both of these books so not too mad about it and now over to other natalie to give you her final thoughts on uprooted by naomi novick all right guys so i believe i'm gonna go ahead and give this book a 4.5 stars um not quite a five star read um didn't love it as much as spinning silver um but really enjoyed my reading experience of this um the one issue i kind of had with it was that in the middle i thought it had a little bit of a pacing issue just because it was a little bit too slow for my taste i think thought things dragged a little bit um but the ending really came through strong for me um so 4.5 i think is a really good rating for this book once again really enjoyed naomi's uh writing and her storytelling style it's just really immersive um and honestly addicting even though I did say the middle of this book was a little slow paced, I probably wouldn't have minded reading like another 200 pages of the story because it was just um, so beautiful um, and interesting and well thought out. So really enjoyed the magic system in here, enjoyed the characters. I like the subtlety of her romances that she has in these books. Um, I do believe this book is new adult. It's listed as both um, adult and YA on Goodreads because I checked because there was like a sex scene that didn't fade to black and I was like, hold up, that wasn't in Spinning Silver. Um, so I'm assuming since our character is um, 17 years old, I believe, um, maybe going on to 18, uh, that it would be considered new adult. So um, just in case you're someone who doesn't like reading books with sex scenes it was just only one and as far as they go it wasn't like the most explicit but it was pretty unexpected so just so that you know that it's in there unlike spinning silver um but yeah the ending uh i thought was really moving uh i did not really expect it and i'm pretty glad that she went down that path i like the decisions that our main character made and how she kind of stuck to her own beliefs even if you know that wasn't the easiest path to travel it was definitely in my opinion um the best path to take um the kindest i guess you could say so those are my final thoughts on the story right now. I think I've said everything that I want to say. So I'm going to go ahead and close off this vlog. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do any more vlogging this month. We'll see. I'm hoping to do at least one more vlog. But of course, with the holidays, things are a little busy and um, I do struggle with vlogging sometimes. But um, anyway... Thank you guys, as always, um, for supporting my channel by watching my videos, and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye!